Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy reveal that global economy has collapsed. According to Musk and Vivek, soon a lot of bad things will happen because the world economy has collapsed and people should know what is really going on. With that, Musk and Vivek just announced about horrible things that big governments around the world are committing that should be public. This is a crazy story development, so let's explain how Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy reveal that global economy has collapsed. So, Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy have been loudly warning that a big economic crisis is coming. They've been talking about this more and more urgently. And Musk, for example, points to big problems like the failures of Silicon Valley Bank and Credit Suisse as signs of bigger troubles. And Musk and Ramaswamy highlighted various factors such as geopolitical tensions, supply chain disruptions, and the long-term impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. Musk emphasized the fragility of the global economic system, pointing out how interconnected and interdependent countries have become, making them more susceptible to cascading effects from regional instabilities. So why the global economy is failing? Well, there are a lot of problems that the global economy is struggling with, and currently the most important problem in this regard is inflation. And it all started in the early 2020 when the global inflation was driven by a confluence of factors, with the COVID-19 pandemic playing a central role. The pandemic led to unprecedented disruptions in supply chains as lockdowns and health concerns slowed or halted production in many industries, particularly in manufacturing and raw materials. This supply shock occurred simultaneously with a demand shock. Governments around the world injected massive fiscal stimulus into their economies to mitigate the economic impact of the pandemic, leading to increased consumer spending. Additionally, central banks adopted loose monetary policies, keeping interest rates low to encourage borrowing and spending. As economies reopened, the mismatch between surging demand and constrained supply led to rising prices, a classic inflationary scenario. Furthermore, geopolitical tensions, notably the Russia-Ukraine conflict, exacerbated the situation by disrupting global energy and food supplies, further fueling inflation. The consequences of this global inflation were multifaceted and impacted both economies and individuals. For consumers, the increased cost of living eroded purchasing power, particularly affecting lower and middle income households. Essentials like food, energy, and housing became significantly more expensive, leading to a decrease in discretionary spending and an increase in financial strain for many families. Economically, persistent inflation prompted central banks worldwide to tighten monetary policy by raising interest rates, aiming to curb spending and slow inflation. This shift had a cooling effect on economic growth and increased the risk of a recession. Higher interest rates also impacted the housing market, making mortgages more expensive and slowing down real estate activity. On a global scale, inflation exacerbated income inequality and heightened economic challenges in developing countries, which often faced higher debt burdens and more limited access to capital to combat inflationary pressures. Also, global debt vulnerabilities that biggest countries including USA and China are facing is also a very important problem. These debt problems in the early 21st century were largely a result of several interconnected factors. The 2008 financial crisis was a significant starting point, leading to a surge in public and private borrowing as governments around the world took on debt to stimulate their economies and bail out financial institutions. This trend of increased borrowing was further accelerated by the COVID-19 pandemic, during which governments again injected massive fiscal stimulus to support faltering economies and healthcare systems. Additionally, years of low interest rates set by central banks to encourage economic growth made borrowing more attractive for both governments and private entities. This environment led to a substantial accumulation of debt across various sectors, including corporate, household, and government debts. Emerging markets, in particular, faced increased borrowing in foreign currencies, which added an extra layer of risk due to potential currency fluctuations. The results of these global debt vulnerabilities are multifaceted and pose significant risks to the global economy. High levels of debt can limit the ability of governments and central banks to respond to new economic crises, as further stimulus measures might exacerbate debt levels and lead to issues of solvency. For countries with debt primarily in foreign currencies, depreciations in their local currency can make it increasingly difficult to service their debts, potentially leading to defaults. In the private sector, high corporate debt levels can lead to increased bankruptcies, especially if economic conditions deteriorate or if interest rates rise, making it more expensive to service debt. This situation can lead to higher unemployment and a slowdown in economic growth, 
Additionally, high levels of household debt can constrain consumer spending, a key driver of economic activity. On a broader scale, excessive global debt levels heighten the risk of financial contagion, where problems in one part of the global financial system rapidly spread to others, potentially leading to a global financial crisis. So Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy have been vocal about how global economy is collapsing, and it's important for them to advocate for the potential of renewable energy and electric vehicles in reducing reliance on fossil fuels, which they see as a source of geopolitical tension. And Ramaswamy often discusses the intersection of politics, culture, and business, critiquing what he sees as the over-politicization of the corporate world. He argues that corporations should focus on delivering value to their shareholders rather than engaging in social or political issues, a stance that indirectly touches on geopolitical matters. Ramaswamy emphasizes the importance of national interests and economic sovereignty, warning against excessive reliance on global supply chains and advocating for a more self-reliant economic approach. His views suggest that geopolitical stability can be achieved through a balance of national self-interest and economic pragmatism, rather than through globalism or political activism by corporations. And that's it for today. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell.